Hey ADF fans, let's have some fun today with the ADF data flow expression language. I'm going to show you some of the really cool things that you can do with the data transformation capabilities of the data flow expression language. So let's start on my design surface and you see I've already primed it with a couple of transformations on my design surface so we're ready to go. So they kind of generated a couple of sample values for us to work with uh, within the expression builder in data flows. So and first I have assigned my source, which is my movies uh, CSV file of common delimited movies reviews and movies database. But that's really going to be completely insignificant. I'm not even going to use it. What I've done is I've created a brand new derived column afterwards. And I'm just creating three brand new computed columns. And I've set static values in each of these. So you can do this as well to test out your logic within your data flows. You don't need to always worry about the source data. What it's going to do is data flows will generate these values for every row within that source. My source has 9,000 rows in it, so it's very easy to work with in this case. In fact, what I can do is I can go up here to debug settings and I can even minimize this to maybe let's just do 100 rows for uh, this demonstration. And we're going to stay here just in the design interface and debug mode. So I have three columns I've been generating F name for file name, full name, and region code. So I'm going to show you three different things to do. The first one, I'm going to show you how to pull out just the file name from this uh, fully qualified path. The second one, I'm going to show you how to take a name, in this case my name, and just pull out the first, last, and middle name or middle initial from that. And then we're going to do some enumeration code mapping. So I'm going to take a region code and I'm going to have a, a case statement with many different values that you can have within that and show you how to do all these things. Very common sort of things that you'll do and data transformation. So let's get started. So now that we have our data, what we'll do is we'll start with a derived column to work with that data. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with that file name, the F name that we have there. So let's call this uh, file name. Uh, we'll just call it file name for the derived column. That's fine. And so we're going to take, what I'll do is I'm going to create a brand new field. I'm not going to overwrite F name. We'll create a brand new one. So we'll call this the final file name. And then in there, we're going to click in um, enter expression. We'll open up the expression builder. So there is the new field that I'm creating it has no data type associated with it yet any because I have not assigned anything to it once we do assign a value to it then data factory can infer the data type for that I can from here I can edit that name if I don't like it I can also uh, generate uh, more columns in here and I can generate sub columns sub columns would create a hierarchy then if you create sub columns just be aware that you need to then be able to have the um, ability to store that in a sort of output that can handle hierarchical formats uh, data structures like JSON for example. So let's take this final file name and let's assign an expression to it. So what I'm going to do is, remember we had the um, uh, we had the forward slash delimited it, uh, string. It's essentially a complete fully qualified path of a file. We only want the name of the file. We don't even want the file extension with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to split it. And I'm going to split it and we're going to split when I say it, I mean the F name column, which is right here. You'll see it on my input schema as well, F name. So I'm going to say split the F name on the delimiter, which is the forward slash. All right, so let's just go ahead and start with that and let's see what we get. You can click refresh down here to uh, play along and to watch your values as you transform your data and write your expression. So you can unit test your logic as you go. And so you see we get an array and we get a value back. We have an array. So split will generate an array based on what you're splitting. So we're going to get array elements you see by this indication right here that this field is now an array and so we have uh, my files 2020 blah, blah, so on and so forth what we want is that last one so to get that what we're going to do is we're going to apply a filter to this so now that we have an array i can use the filter function which takes an array and so that array now is the split so that's going to be my first parameter from filter the second parameter filter is going to be what is it you're filtering i only want whatever has the dot csv in it so I'm going to say ends with dot. So pound item is a special um, keyword within the expression language that says the current item of the iteration of all the elements uh, values in the array. Anything that uh, that has that ends with it ends with dot csv because we are only going to want the array element with the dot csv in it at the end. Okay, so I'm going to say ends with. And we can just complete that. So we can check here, see that all of our parentheses are completed. They are. Okay, let's see what we get now. So this this now should show us that we're going to get back just the elements that have .csv of the splits array 
from that file name and there it is file.csv so we're almost there one last thing that we want to do is we well, first of all the the filter i should say it's just so you know because filter works with arrays it gives you an array back but we don't want an array we want the first value which is the actual string itself so i'm going to say left one right one square bracket all right and now we can split that because we only want the first part we don't want the second part after the dot so i'm going to split on the period Split again gives you an array. I don't want an array. I want this file name to be the file name, file name to be a single string. So I'm going to say, uh, give me the first elements within that, which is the file name. If I said two on here, it would be CSV because we're splitting on the dot. And these array functions within Expression Builder are based on SQL uh, style functions. So it is one based. And there we go, now we have file names. That's how you get just the file name out of that string. So that's done there. And we can just stick right here with the same derived column. Uh, we can add more expressions in here. But since I've named this as a uh, distinct set of work, I'm gonna leave it as this, and I'm gonna do another derived column. This is completely up to you now you want to do that. So let's do a derived column. Now we'll work with the second, which is the full name. So we're gonna split that off into a last, first, and middle initial. Okay, so we'll do derived column and we'll call this as, uh, we'll say, you know, split name. So the first thing I'm gonna do is it just generates uh, the first column that I want to create, which is the first name. And then we'll go into the expression builder from here and we'll do the rest there. So we say first name, and now we're gonna say last name. And then we'll add another one and we'll call this one as middle initial. We'll just say middle, I think, uh, middle and nets, I think was what we'll call it. There we go. Very good. So to start with the first name, the first name was coming right after the comma. So what we'll do is if you want to look at what your data is while you're here within the expression builder, let's just pick that input field that you want. So this is full name just to make this entire function um, work so we can test it in real time. I'm just going to put full name in here for all three of these. Then we'll go through one by one and we'll make them work specifically for that value. Let's start with the first name again. And now that we have that, let me just click refresh and we'll get to see what full name is equal to as a value to work with. All right, there it is. So, uh, yep, so is Cromer, comma, mark space a period so we're going to get the first name so let's go ahead and let's do let's do a split so we'll get the second i want to be the second element within that array so we'll do a split on full name and we'll do that by comma and then we only want the second so the second is going to give us the um, first name space the abbreviation for the middle name now, to take off the middle initial, rather than do a split here on space or something of that nature, I'm going to just subtract the last three from this because the space could sometimes be part of a person's first name as well, so I want to account for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, so let's simply do the left function. So we're going to take this value, which represents the mark space A colon, and we're going to get the length of this. I'm going to say, give me the left of that string, the length to be the length of that string minus three. So we back off three from the very end. And now let's refresh that. Now we just should just get marks. So now we have first name. Let's take a look and see if we get the expected results here. And it looks good. Great. So I'm happy with that. Let's move on to last name next. Last time in this case should be a lot easier. So all I'm gonna to have to do now is just split that again. Oops. Yep, there we go. On the comma. And we will just take the first element. Boom. And now we want initial. Initial is always gonna be the last two characters. And we'll keep the period in there. Actually, you know what? Let's be fancy about it. Let's take off that period. That's fine. So let's take the um, second to last character of that name. So we'll do the split one more time. We'll split that full name on the delimiter, which is comma. All right. I'm going to copy that so I can get that string. So we are specifying element two of the array so that we're getting the just the first name, space, middle initial. 
Okay, now that we have that, now let's do this time a substring. So let's just do a substring of that first and middle initial. And then we will uh, start. So the second parameter of substring is going to be the starting position, which is going to be the length of that substring minus one. So we're at the dot right now. If we subtract one, we'll be at the A. And then we want to continue just for one space. That'll give us just the A character that we need. Let's make sure we have all the right parentheses. No, we, need, we have the, uh, oh, I am forgetting my array element, which is two. And that should do it. Now we should get A for the middle initial. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so that is splitting apart the name. Let's save and finish this one. File name, split name, and now that leaves us with the other. Uh, what we're going to do here is region codes. Let's do a case statement for this. So we'll call this, we'll do another drive column. Let's call this, uh, this will be our enumeration. I like that name. And so we're going to do is we're going to uh, change that one, that code, into an actual region name. Okay, so let's, in this case, let's use the case statement. All right, so let's take an input uh, for input schema of that region code. So what we'll do is we'll start, we'll give a little bit of nice sort of um, spacing here within our expression builder. We'll say, so case where the region code is one, then we wanna say, let's say it is uh, northeast. Case where the region code is two, let's say that's central. Case where the region code is three, we'll say is uh, mountain. And the region code is four, and we're gonna say it is west. So you create a nice mapping, sort of a, a nice categorical data enumeration within uh, Dataflow. And so when we click and refresh this, we're always gonna see northeast because we only have one region code in here. But you see we've translated that to northeast. So that gives you some idea of the interesting, cool things you can do with data transformation in the expression language in ADF's data flow. Thanks for watching.